He can talk, 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 he can talk! This might be another one of the most painfully average Twilight Zone tales I have ever watched. I'm not too crazy about this plot. This was one of those Twilight Zone episodes where its concept was so genuinely cool that it inspired many, many sci-fi ideas just like it, but the original version of it was not as great when you look back at it. In this tale, we follow two astronauts traveling to Mars to make first contact with the Martians. One of our heroes being played by the late, great Rowdy McDowell. The Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter and his bestie ride the first starship to Mars, but oh no, the best friend died in a crash. No biggie, since the Mad Hatter successfully befriends the native Star Trek Martians. Yeah, I'm none too keen on the alien designs for this one. Seriously, showrunners, this show, which brought us the Gremlin, a nightmare world, living dummies, flying saucers, and the sinking of a refugee ship, settled on these Roman Martian getups? How disappointing. This is not the only thing that made me unimpressed with this episode. I mean no kitten when I tell you that almost 70% of this story is the Mad Hatter mourning his dead BFF. The co-pilot who died in the crash gets this final monologue, Mad Hatter angsts about him for over all the second act, the Martians host a funeral for him and memorialize him as the first human buried on Mars, and the dead buddy even got his foreshadowing speech brought up in the twist. We only knew this guy for like two minutes, but so much screen time is dedicated to him. We barely knew him, why should we care? Heck, why spend most of this episode exploring Martian society and human understanding, focusing on this guy's tragic demise when he isn't even the main character? Other than his foreshadowing Twilight Zone speech, he does not matter. The plot truly kicks off when the Mad Hatter befriends the Martians, where he seeks to study them and their culture, only to get betrayed by his false friends when they trick Hatter into getting imprisoned at their alien zoo. You see, rather than treat the astronaut as their equal, the Martians make him an exhibit to admire and study like a test subject who means nothing delivering a lesson on how people are not as advanced as we think because life has small-minded jerks no matter where you go. Which the Mad Hatter realizes too little too late. Marcuson, you are right! People are alike everywhere. Oh, that's why they- He said it! He said it! He said it! Now, I do love the alien zoo concept. Having a human zoo is a colorful idea with tons of possibilities for good storytelling. Sadly, this episode kind of reserves the alien zoo as a twist, rather than a chance for a funner adventure. I think stories like Are You Afraid of the Dark's The Tale of the Closet Keepers and Planet of the Apes are much superior versions of this idea, since they embraced the insane setups and amounted to awesome horror conflicts. The Twilight Zone may have invented the alien zoo idea first, but they failed to do anything with it, which is why I felt underwhelmed. Believe me, I don't take any joy in crapping on the Twilight Zone, but it feels like the plot just meanders around for a long while. Before the dark turn pops up to say, surprise! The story is a whole lot of nothing until the unique twist at the end. Not all that much entertaining build-up, and even the big reveal feels kind of weak. Since the Mad Hatter had zero character to make this all feel like an impactful boom. 
It's so dull and slow, to the point where nothing cool happens till the end. Exactly! It's just a bunch of stuff that happened. But it certainly was a memorable few days. That's really all I have to say. The twist was the best part. I'd rather there have been a fun scenario taking place in the space zoo and not save the zoo for the finale. Because we get nothing but long padding which can't amuse alone. I do think the strong parts of this tale were the sets. From the sideways rocket shipwreck to the human zoo, the visual designs were the slickest achievement. And even a grumpy cat like me can agree that the book ends was real clever. I love how this episode opens up with the Mad Hatter standing at a fence, gazing upon a science experiment as nothing more but a thing to be studied, only to have this episode end with the protagonist, now on the opposite side of a fence, gazed upon as a thing to be studied. Even at the show's weakest, the Twilight Zone can still pump out some brilliant symbolism. You just blew my mind. <laughs> Unfortunately, the bland story, boring characters, and severe pacing issues are what decreased my enjoyment of this episode. I give it a bronze skull. Not an awful mess, but just a brutally lackluster tale that could have been so much more than what we got. There are shards of a great episode here, but this experiment only failed to be alike with the other successes of The Twilight Zone. Yes, you finally made.